Today we're doing a top 5 planes in all of War Thunder, that is, for their respective BRs. Before we do that, I'd like to thank my Patreons on screen here. Shout out to you guys, big help for the channel. Now we're gonna go ahead and speed around the disclaimers. This is just my opinion, it's an opinion list. Your opinion's probably not going to agree with mine, and that's completely okay. I don't have the time to play every single play in the game super extensively, so I apologize if I've missed anything. If I have, let me know in the comments down below, and tell me what your top five best planes list is. I feel like the P-51H is going to need a little bit more explaining than a lot of the other things on the list because there are a couple things wrong with it and it's not necessarily the fault of the P-51H but nonetheless it is going to taint your experience a little bit and therefore that is the reason why it's number 5. Let's get those things out of the way first uh, and the main thing being that it's in the 6.0 matchmaker of hell and that matchmaker's god awful. If you've played any longer than an hour of that matchmaker you know exactly what I'm talking about. JU-288s are everywhere. The games are just horrible, usually goes by tickets one way or another. The team sizes might be like 5 versus 5 and then 4 of the players are JU-288s. It's, it's just a nightmare. The other problem is that while at 6.3, and that's the main focus of this video, is the plane's own BR. At 6.3 this thing is so ridiculously strong that every single prop in the game just doesn't stand a chance against this this vehicle in a one versus one of any kind unless of course they can start at a massive advantage over the p51h and you know at that point it's more than often a skill issue or maybe you're just going to lose the game anyways it's just impossible to win certain situations but let's just for the sake of argument say that this thing compared to every other vehicle in the game at 6.3 battle rating hell almost all of the 6.7s even, the P-51H is just going to absolutely dunk on. You basically have unlimited power as far as a prop engine goes. This thing on WEP, the horsepower is ridiculous. This thing accelerates up to like 700 in a straight line. Uh, it doesn't even take that long to get to, especially in comparison to other props that can't even go that fast in a straight line. The climb rate is fantastic, the energy retention is also fantastic. You can see I literally just hold S against this LA-9 because I know that my engine just severely overpowers his and I can make my turn radius tighter at the same time. So basically he stood no chance. And that's going to be a theme with a lot of the vehicles that you're going to play against. I'm going to show you a few clips of me killing jets because this thing is more than capable of killing a lot of the jets at 7.0, mainly so the German ones. Uh, some things can just run away from you, and that can be an issue that is annoying to have to deal with, but like I said, uh, we're more so talking about a plane at its own battle rating here. Probably the main thing I don't like about props is the fact that you have to climb. I usually have to have something to keep myself entertained in the meantime, and that reminds me of today's sponsor, Hero Wars. Hero Wars is an online PvP game available on the App Store and Google Play Store where you battle enemies and unlock skills and heroes to continuously fight epic battles. And I find that having a good mobile game is a nice way to stay entertained between War Thunder matches. There's a hero to fit everybody's playstyle and archetype out there, so click the link below or scan the QR code on screen to get started into the world of Hero Wars. And here you see me doing pretty much the exact same thing to this LA-9 as I did to the other one. I was literally just holding S, bleeding him of his energy by making him continuously turn. The thing is, is that my engine is just simply way stronger. And this plane's not a slouch either. Like I said, it can actually turn pretty tight. I'd say the only prop that actually gives the P-51H an issue, and by issue I mean they're pretty equally, equally matched, is the Spitfire Mark 24. But that's at battle rating 7.0, so does that really count? You be the judge. And now we have demonstrations of the German jets that I was talking about earlier just not quite having enough power and speed at all times to actually make an attack on the P-51H without risking any kind of counterattack. The German jets, the World War II ones, are not particularly fast and unless you come out of a dive and get to, you know, that max, uh, max speed that you can actually get out of your 229 and your 262 and then just fly in a straight line and slowly climb back up to altitude to do it all over again. If you're not running that line perfectly and straight the whole time, you're going to start bleeding speed in these jets. And the distance at which you can separate from the P-51H is not going to be as rapid. And it's certainly not going to be as rapid as you need it to in order to not take fire from the 50 cals. Because we all know 50 cals are super annoying guns to have to defend against. Of course, if the 229 is just going to stall himself out, let me get some free shots in, that's also fine. But here we see the 262 trying to outpower me in the verticals, and it just wasn't working for him. He doesn't have that much thrust to weight whatsoever, and the P-51H can honestly keep up with the 262, 
if he's not coming straight from his top speed dive. The Ta 152H is another plane that is an actual prop at 6.0, very similar BR to the P51H, and the Ta 152H can actually give the P51H a run for its money if you let it. The thing with the Ta 152 is that it's really, really good at turn fighting, dog fighting. It's got pretty much the best maneuvering energy retention of any prop in War Thunder, as well as with landing flaps, and it can outturn almost every plane at the battle rating. And that doesn't include the P51H. If you're a P51H and you are going to stick a turn fight with the Ta 152H, you're simply going to lose. It's going to beat you on energy retention despite having a way weaker engine, and the landing flaps are going to make it pull inside of you pretty much all day long. The thing is, is that the P51H basically has unlimited energy over the Tal 152H. You can see here, I was pretty much just flying around and staying away from the Tal 152 until I can get him into a position to where he thinks he can do some kind of attack, he ends up bleeding all of his speed in the process, and I'm able to come back down on him. You've essentially got a 5.3 engine when you're flying the Tal 152H at 6.0 battle rating. The airframe very much carries that plane rather than the engine does. But if you have a P51H that can exploit that lack of power in the Tal 152H, you're pretty much not going to be able to do anything against it. And here we have our number two plane, the BI. Just to explain chat really quick, I'm pretty sure that guy was in an F84, complained about the BI, but it wasn't even an issue because he ends up just full committing a 262 and dying instead, so he never even fought me. I just thought it was a little bit silly that he was complaining about it in chat. Anyways. Uh, the BI certainly is something that is valid to complain about when it's flying behind your 6. At 6.7 or 6.3, 6.0, god forbid you get a 5.7 game with the BI, you are absolutely untouchable. And if it weren't for the fact that this thing can see jets, I know I, I do talk about how this video is mostly focusing on planes at their own battle rating, but I am still going to consider the up tiers. How viable and how strong are they in the up tier? And that isn't more or less what's going to put it on the list, but rather the position on the list. And that's why this thing is sitting at number four, because at 7.0 or a 7.7 match, pretty much all of the jets except those German ones are just going to be able to run away from you. And while on paper that sounds like a way to counter the BI, at the same time, if you are one of those jets, having to constantly be at top speed and fly in a straight line no matter what, and not being able to capitalize on any of the mistakes that the enemy team is making because there's a BI around, and if you do, you're not gonna be going top speed anymore, and then it's just gonna come murder you, that's pretty damn annoying. So while the BI can be countered, I guess, in an up tier when it, once it gets into a jet match, mainly because of the lack of fuel, if you're going to be catching these jets, you're going to be compressing as well as burning pretty much all of your fuel in the process. But it can be done, and if you do manage your fuel and just take advantage of the situations where somebody isn't going top speed, you can still definitely do perfectly fine in the jet matches. It's just not completely game-breaking like it is when you're going up against props, which to some people that's pretty often me. I got more jet games than I did prop games. But nonetheless, you are going to get plenty of prop games. And let me just tell you, I don't even think I include any in this video, which is just sad. Uh, because, like I said, I mostly just got jet matches. But if you do manage to fight props, it is ridiculous, man. If this plane only fought props, it would, without a doubt, be the most broken plane in the game at any BR. You only get 2 minutes of fuel, technically, but you can easily stretch that out to 10, even 15 minutes with some throttle management and making sure that you use your fuel and your throttle when you actually need to. I almost forgot. Hero Wars has 6 unique modes and over 100 million players. You can solo your way through the enemy or group up with your friends. If you're looking for something fresh, be sure to check out any of the 6 game modes as they all offer something unique that you will have never tried before. Once again, links in the description down below or scan the QR code on screen and start playing Hero Wars for free today. And here we have another aircraft that needs absolutely zero introduction. The Su-11 is actually 7.3 now, not 7.0, so that's at least somewhat nice. But that 7.3, your matchmaker doesn't really change. You're still going to absolutely slam everything 7.3, 7.0, 6.7, 6.3. It's no contest. This thing will absolutely roll everything that it faces at the battle rating. At 7.7, you're starting to talk maybe it's actually balanced, but it honestly could probably be 8.0 and not do that badly. The stats are single-handedly tanked by premium players that 
just can't aim the guns and therefore they're not getting as many kills as they should. So the guns do take a little bit of practice, I will give them that, but really there's no reason to not be going like 5-1 to one in the SU-11. I don't want to talk KDs, but good god, there's not a single plane that I think holds your hand more in the jet era than the SU-11 does. At 7.3, you have very, very similar thrust to weight as the MiG-15, the non-BIS MiG-15, the one that's at 8.3. In this plane, 7.3. You basically have the same thrust to weight as an 8.3 plane. Not quite, but it's close. On top of that, the SU-11 turns pretty damn well. It can outturn a lot of the things at the battle rating. It's a little bit difficult to manage your speed in certain kinds of scissor fights and whatnot because you don't have an air brake, so making people overshoot can sometimes be a little bit of a pain, especially with the ample thrust that you have. But if you're picking good lines as far as how to get behind people, or not even that. I mean, just pick the right targets. It's ARB. You're never going to run out of energy. You can just fly around and click people out of the sky. And up tier, this plane isn't all that great. Like I said, it's more in the realms of balance at that point. But at its own battle rating, I think the only thing that I'd say you actually have to somewhat watch out for would be, I don't know, maybe a Meteor Mark III solely because it's going to be able to turn around and point its nose at you if you do overshoot, which probably will. It's a Meteor Mark III. It'll be able to turn around so quickly, it might get a pot shot at you as you're flying away. The Kika is also one that can give the SU-11 a run for its money, but in the end of the day, at 7-3, man, this plane, it just, it's still just kind of king. Again, not a whole lot to say about it. You all kind of know what it is. So at number two, we have the J2M2. And I think this one is going to be largely unthought of to a lot of my subscribers, mainly because, let's be honest, most of you guys probably just play top tier. I doubt a lot of you out there even care about the props, uh, which is bad news for you for this video because there's not a lot of things at top tier that I would consider amongst the best things in the game for their battle rating, just because of the way that top tier games work. Just to give you a little bit of a rundown on the J2 series of aircraft that the Japanese have. You have the J2M2, which is on screen right here, at battle rating 4.3. There's also a J2M5, the next step up in battle rating, at 4.7. From my understanding, it's basically the J2M5 at 5.7, but with different guns. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what it is. The J2M3 is just all, all around heavier than the J2M2 without offering you any kind of extra power to compensate for that. So, the J2M3 is battle rating 5.7. This one is straight up better than the J2M3 in all but armament, and it's 4.3. Moving up from there, you have the J2M5 non-premium, which is also 5.7. This plane is better than the J2M5 below 4,000 meters altitude, but the J2M5 finally gets an edge over the J2M2 above 5,000 meters of altitude. Which one's more meta though in current prop games? The way the tickets work, uh, the average match time, things like that. You probably want a plane that is more successful at low altitude. And by that metric, and that, by that metric, if that's the way you're going to measure things, the J2M2 is just the best J2M, and it's at the lowest battle rating, which is absolutely comical. And that's not to say that this plane should be 5.7, because the, uh, the other J2Ms are more than likely just over-tiered because they're a Japanese plane that has four cannons, all of the cannons are pretty strong on the J2 series. This one, however, has 120 rounds, I believe, or maybe it's 200 rounds of two 20mm cannons. So not quite as lethal armament, and therefore that's probably why the player stats have this thing at 4.3 versus the ones with four cannons and a couple of them with 30 mil cannons at battle rating 5.7. At 4.3, this thing is an absolute menace to society. There is pretty much nothing at this battle rating that can actually give this thing a run for its money. It's going to outturn almost everything. It's going to outclimb pretty much everything, even XP-50s, although XP-50s do get an air spawn, so sometimes they might be higher if you meet an XP-50 that's climbing completely optimal, but if they're just a little bit off in their climb speed and whatnot, and you have your climb speed correct, you will be above XP-50s. It's not the fastest plane in a straight line, but it's definitely not slow by any means, and it's still got that whole Japanese point your nose at anything and take a very long time to stall out type deal. The maneuvering energy retention is also superb. The flaps can come out at pretty high speeds in the combat position just to give you that extra bit of turn that you might need in certain instances. 
The takeoff and landing flaps are also very effective. It's just, it's just a good plane. It, <laughs> it outdoes basically everything at the battle rating. But what could be worse than the J2M2? It sounds pretty awful, right? The P39N. This thing is 2.7 battle rating and it really should probably be up there at the 4.0, 4.3 scale. Maybe 4.3 is a little bit high. We'll say 3.7 to 4.0. The P39N is a plane that at this battle rating, it's gonna be sometimes hard to gauge what it does well because your competition is gonna be just completely clueless for the most part. You have to keep in mind, you're playing like rank two. A lot of these guys are new to the game. They're probably not gonna be very good and they're not expected to be very good yet. And so a lot of times when you're fighting somebody, it's going to be pretty free no matter what aircraft you're in. But that's only further exaggerated by the fact that this plane is laughably broken as far as the BR it's placed at. And if you like kicking puppies and shoving kids that are smaller than you into lockers, this is a perfect choice for you. If you spend some time looking for something that the P39N does poorly, especially in the realms of the 2.7 battle rating, you're gonna be here all day. The speed and acceleration in a straight line is pretty damn good. The climb is good enough, especially for the battle rating. And of course, it can actually turn one of the few American planes that can turn fight without losing all of its energy in the process. If you've made it this far into the video, you're in luck. Hero Wars is offering 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and five unique heroes to start dominating the battlefield. Download and play Hero Wars for free today, link in the description down below. The gun is very, very helpful for killing bombers, which is something that a lot of 2.7s just don't have. Uh, a lot of times you gotta sit behind a bomber for a pretty long time at the lower tiers because they just soak up damage and you don't have particularly powerful guns. The 37mm of the P39 definitely remedies that and it can make your match feel a lot smoother where you're not just chasing that last guy and dumping hundreds and hundreds of rounds into his tanky bomber. The flaps, of course, are also fantastic. You get 50 cals on top of the cannon, as well as some 30 cals, but who uses those? The P-39 is just one of those planes that you basically enter a fight with some decent speed, and then you just hold S and hope they start turning with you. If they don't turn with you, that's completely fine too. You can just catch up to them later. But if they do actually try to dogfight you, more often than not, you're probably just going to run them out of energy, and then you can end up just turning in and shooting them. So that pretty much sums up the list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what your list is. Let me know if I've missed anything. Let me know what top five I should do next, and hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you next time.